Welcome to Mrs. Lee's Chemistry Academy, where no students are left behind. Today, we're going to cover the last part on oxidation reduction reactions. This is tied to the uh, learning objective from the College Board that students are able to apply conservation of atoms to the rearrangement of atoms in the equation. The student can translate among microscopic observation of change, chemical equations, and particle views. The student can write a balanced e equation based on observation of chemical change. And being able to identify it is a redox reaction by knowing that there's electron transfer. Then finally, design an experiment involving a redox titration. Here's a problem. Solution of potassium iodide is added to an acidified solution of potassium dichromate, and we shall do it by the oxidation number method or the uh, electron transfer method. So we started with iodide solution. This is aqueous. And uh, the potassium is spectator ion, so I'm not going to write it out. Uh, added to potassium dichromate solution. Uh, Cr207, 2 minus the yellow, uh, the orange solution. Now, I'm going to worry about that hydrogen ion later on. So this will produce chromium 3 plus ion and iodine in the solution. Um, so uh, let's say, uh, it should be a solid, but let's say it's, uh, we call that a liquid. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to balance the number of atoms by inserting a 2 in front of the iodide ion and inserting a coefficient of 2 in front of chromium 3 plus ion. Now, if I count the total oxidation number from iodide to iodine, it is going from minus 2 to 0, meaning 2 moles of electrons have been lost. Minus 2 electrons, so this is oxidation. Now, if I go from the chromium to the chromium. The total oxidation number here is plus 12, and over here is plus 6. That means it has gained 6 moles of electron, and this is called reduction. In order to make the electron transfer be equal, I need to multiply um, the, this by 3, a coefficient of 3, so that will change the I die into 6 moles of I minus, and I insert a coefficient of 3 in front of the iodine. Now I count my oxygen atoms. I have 7 on the reactant side. So I put 7 moles of water or 7 molecules of water over here to the right. And I have created 14 hydrogen ion. So I balance it by putting 14 H plus on the left. Now I know that my atoms are conserved. Let me check my charges. Uh, I have plus 14, minus 6, minus 2, so that's a net of plus 8, plus 6, plus 6. And then on the uh, right-hand side, I also have a net charge of plus 6. So that's a check. That means I know my equation has been balanced correctly. Now here's a recap of my work earlier for you to follow. If um, you want to pause the screen and try to do it one more time yourself, that would be a very good way to practice. Okay, the next question, dealing with um, same thing, potassium iodide, but we're going to do it in the um, half reaction method, by the half reaction method. So I started with iodide to become iodine. And I balance my atoms by placing a 2 coefficient in front of iodine ion. And because I have a negative 2 charge on the left as the reactant, I add 2 moles of electron negatively charged to the right-hand side, to the product side. So that's oxidation. And the next thing I'll do is to take the uh, dichromate uh, ion and uh, reduce it into chromium 3 plus ion and I multiply that by 2 to balance the number of chromium atoms 
And now I add seven moles of water to balance the O atoms. And I add 14 hydrogen ion to the left to balance the H atoms. Then I look at the charges. I have a plus 12 on the left, plus six on the right. Therefore, I add six moles of electron negatively charged to balance the charges. And because I want to make sure that the electron transfers are equal, I go ahead and multiply the above equation by three. And now I can sum up the two equations, cancel out the six moles of the electron. Now I have six iodine and 14 hydrogen ion and the dichromate ion to make uh, three moles of iodine molecule and two moles of Cr3 plus and seven moles of water. So this is the same as what I have gotten previously by the um, oxidation number method. So here's a recap for you to follow my work. Okay, the next question deals with um, hydrogen peroxide added to acidify solution of potassium dichromate. So hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 and the potassium dichromate without the potassium spectator ion is written as Cr2 O7 2 minus. Usually these group one metal ions are spectator ions. So that's gonna yield two moles of chromium three plus. I do this to balance the atoms and because chromium is reduced, that means hydrogen peroxide is oxidized into oxygen gas. Okay. And um, then I look at the total oxidation number going from plus 12 to plus 6 by gaining 6 moles of electron, so that's reduction. Um, okay. Let me see. All right, so um, here it is one more time. I um, look at the total oxidation numbers. Okay, then I um, realize that the chromium is reduced by gaining six moles of electrons when the oxidation number changes from plus 12 to plus six. And the oxygen is oxidized by losing two moles of electron when the oxidation number changes from negative two to zero. Remember, in peroxide, the O has a negative one oxidation number. Now then I multiply the hydrogen peroxide and the oxygen by a coefficient of three to balance the six moles of electron. And this is what I just did here. Now, because there are 13 moles of oxygen on the left and 6 moles of oxygen on the right, I add 7 moles of water to the right to balance oxygen atoms. Okay, now, because I have 6 moles of hydrogen atom on the left and 14 moles of hydrogen atom on the right, I add 8 moles of H plus to the left to balance the hydrogen atoms. And here it is. Now, I check the number of atoms, they are conserved. I check the charges, and they are both plus six on both sides, so I know I have balanced the equation correctly. Now here is solving the same problem by the half reaction method. Let's go into hydrogen peroxide, becoming oxygen. And that yields two moles of H plus because I want to make sure that my atoms are conserved. And the H plus, two plus will be balanced by two moles of electron so that the charges are zero on both sides. Now I have the dichromate, Cr2, O7, two minus, to become uh, two Cr3 plus, and balance the oxygen by adding seven moles of water and 14 moles of H plus over here. And um, the charge on the on the left is plus 12, and the charge on the right is plus six. So I add six moles of electron here. And to make the electrons balance, I multiply the above equation by three. Now I have three moles of hydrogen peroxide, and 14 moles of hydrogen ion, and one mole of the dichromate, 
ion to yield three moles of oxygen and uh, six moles of hydrogen ion and two moles of chromium three plus and seven moles of water. Now my electrons are already canceled. But note that I have hydrogen ion on both sides as reactant as, and product. So I'm going to combine them together, cancel out the six moles of hydrogen ion on the product side and combine it into eight moles of hydrogen ion on the reactant side. And my net charge is plus six on both sides. So I know the equation is balanced correctly. So here is a recap of my earlier work for you to follow and practice. All right, the next question deals with a redox titration. We want to determine percentage of hydrogen peroxide in a redox titration. Design a lab procedure um, using standardized solution of 0.0200 molar potassium permanganate solution. We usually do the standardization by standardizing it with either oxalate ion or with iron 2 plus ion to know the exact uh, molarity of the permanganate solution. So what we do is that because this uh, permanganate solution is very dilute, so we want to use a very small sample of the hydrogen peroxide. And in this case, I decided to use two milliliters. So I pipette that into a flask. And then I add to that 20 milliliter of the three molar sulfuric acid uh, in order to provide the hydrogen ion in the acidic medium. Then I do lining to my burette uh, with this uh, standardized potassium permanganate solution to make sure there's no water droplet that would dilute the solution from the burette. Now I record the initial volume. Now I titrate it to the pale pink color endpoint when all the hydrogen peroxide is used up, that one additional drop of permanganate ion will then yield a pink color in the solution when Mn2 plus ion is produced. Now I record the final volume from the burette and I repeat this for two more trials. So here's the data chart. Uh, here I have done it three times. I record initial volume of permanganate in the burette, final volume of permanganate in the burette, and by subtraction I get the volume of permanganate titrated, which is about 31, 30, 32 milliliter. And I know that I used two milliliter of the hydrogen peroxide exactly when I pipetted it into the flask. Now I can use my data for calculations. So a balanced equation is very important because we want to know the mole ratio between permanganate and hydrogen peroxide. So using trial one as a sample calculation, the molarity times volume will give me 0.000624 moles of permanganate ion. That further is multiplied by a mole fraction uh, factor of 5 to 2, 5 moles of peroxide to 2 moles of permanganate solution from the balanced equation, and then convert it into grams of hydrogen peroxide using a molar mass of 34 grams. And now it yields 0 0.0531 grams. And assuming that the hydrogen peroxide solution has a density of 1 gram per milliliter, when I pipe at the 2 mil, I have used 2 grams. So now I can calculate the mass percent of the peroxide in the sample, which turns out to be 2.66%. And take the average of three trials, they're very, very close. I have 2.67% on the average. And the label says 3%. Therefore, my percent error is 10%. Uh, what could we have done to yield either high or low percentage if we titrate it with too much permanganate, that means over titration, that would yield a larger mole of permanganate calculated and therefore a higher mass percent of the peroxide in the sample. If our pipette was wet with water to begin with, that means I have actually delivered a smaller volume of hydrogen peroxide in the pipette that contains less number of moles and therefore require a smaller volume of permanganate for the titration and in the calculation, then that would yield a smaller or lower mass percent. So to sum up what we have learned today in this lesson, we learned how to balance redox reaction by electron transfer method and half reaction method. We also designed an experiment for the redox titration and we did data analysis 
determine the mass percent of analyte in the sample, and we analyze errors that would lead to either higher or lower mass percent. I hope that you have found the above lesson to be useful to you. I welcome any comments from you, and I hope to see you again next time.